Hello dearies. Um, long time no read, I know. But, as most of you may know, Tonight and Midnight is the world premiere of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. And, if you can't see, I'm completely dressed, ready to go. I have my, um, Gryffindor scarf, I have my, um, tie, dre um, proper shirt attire dress, and, um, knee-high socks. So, I'm totally, totally ready to go. Oh, oh, oh. And my wand. And yes, I'm bringing it to the movie theater so I can cast spells on whoever I'd like and, you know, all that jazz. So, and of course, if you haven't guessed, I'm going to read an excerpt from The Deathly Hallows because what else would make more sense than tonight? Let us just open up to a random page, shall we? <clears throat> I'm on page 120 if you would like to know. I'm going to read with my wand tonight and I know that I don't have glasses so I'm really sorry, but. <clears throat> Starting at, um, where Hermione speaks. Randomly. Okay. Third indent. We're fine, said Hermione. How are you? Are oh, not bad. Been busy. We got some newborn unicorns. I'll show you when you get back. Mm -hmm. Harry avoided Ron's and Hermione's gazes as Hagrid rummaged in his pocket. Here, Harry. Couldn't think what to get you, but then I remembered this. He pulled out a small, slightly furry drawstring pouch with a long string, evidently intended to be worn around the neck. Mokeskin. Hide anything in there, and no one but the owner can get it out. They're rare, them. Hagrid, thanks. It's nothing, said Hagrid, with a wave of Dubston lid sized hand. And there's Charlie. Always liked him. Hey, Charlie. Charlie approached, running his hand through slightly roof his hand slightly roofly over his new brutally short haircut. He was shorter than Ron, thick set, with a number of bands and scratches up his muscly arms. Hi, Hagrid, how's it going? Been meaning to write for ages. How's Norbert doing? Norbert? Charlie laughed. The new in Norwegian Ridgeback? We call her Norber Norberta now. What? Norbert's a girl? Oh, yeah, said Charlie. How can you tell? said asked Hermione. They're a lot more vicious, said Charlie. He looked up over his shoulder and dropped his voice. Wish Dad would hurry up and get here. Mom's getting edgy. They all looked over at Mrs. Weasley. She was trying to talk Madame, Madame Delacour while glancing repeatedly at the gate. I think we'd better start without Arthur. She called to the garden at large after a moment or two. He must have been held up at- Oh! They all saw it at the same time. A streak of light that came flying across the yard and onto the table, where it resolved itself into a bright silver weasel, which stood on its hind legs and spoke with Mr. Weasley's voice. Minister of Magic coming with me. The Patronus dissolved into thin air, leaving Fleur's family appearing in astonishment at the place where he had vanished. We shouldn't be here, said Lupin at once. Harry, I'm sorry. I'll explain it another time. He seized Tonks' wrist and pulled her away. They reached the fence, climbed over it, and vanished from sight. Mrs. Weasley looked bewildered. The minister, but why? I don't understand. But there was no time to discuss the matter. A second later, Mr. Weasley had appeared out of thin air at the gate, accompanied by Rufus Scrimmagall, instantly recognizable by his mane of grizzled hair. The two newcomers marched across the yard, toward the garden, and the lantern lit table, where everybody sat in silence, watching them draw closer. A scrim, scrim gore came within range of the lantern light. Harry saw that he looked much older than the last time they had met. Scraggy and grim. Sorry to, intru sorry to intrude, said Scrim gore, as he limped to a halt before the table, especially as I can see that I am gate crashing a party. <clears throat> His eyes lingered for a moment on the giant snitch cake. Many happy returns. Thanks, said Harry. I require a private word with you, Scrim gore went on, and with Mr. Ronald Weasley and Miss Hermione Granger. Us, said Ron, sounding surprised. <laughs> Why us? I shall tell you that when we are somewhere more private, said Scrimmelor. Is there such a place? He demanded of Mr. Weasley. Yes, of course, said Mr. Weasley, who looked nervous. The your sitting room. Why don't you use that? You can lead the way, Scrimmelor said to Ron. There will be no need for you to accompany us, Arthur. Harry saw Mr. Weasley exchange a worried look with Mrs. Weasley as he, Ron, and Hermione stood up. As they led the way back to the house in silence, Harry knew that the other two were thinking the same as he was. Scrimly girl must somehow have learned that the three of them were planning to drop out of Hogwarts. Scrimgore did not speak as they all passed through the messy kitchen into the bare sending room. Although the garden had been full of soft golden evening light, it was already dark in here. Harry flicked his wand at the oil lamps as he entered and they illuminated the shabby but cozy room. Scrimgore sat himself in the sagging armchair that Mr. Weasley normally occupied, leaving Harry, Ron, and Hermione to squeeze side by side onto the sofa. Once they had done so, Scrimgore spoke. 
And that, my dearies, is where I shall leave off. And I promise I will try to read more. I I can't even begin to tell you how crazy my life has been lately. Busy, ridiculous, out of control. I can't even handle it myself. But um, I'm sure after I see the movie tonight, I'm going to go through crazy Harry Potter. Oh my god, oh my god, I'm so obsessed phase for a long time. And I'm probably going to see it a thousand more times. Thus, the um, obsession will continue for much longer. So I will try and try my hardest to keep reading to you because I've been neglecting my viewers and I'm so sorry. So, as always, dearies, good night.